Okay, here goes. I'm just, just going to speak and to speak. <laughs> so bear with me, guys, if I stutter. My name is BC. I, my full name is Ola BC Bironke, but I prefer if people call me BC. I was born in Nigeria. I grew up in a Christian home. At a very young age, at a very young age, I was already sexually aware in the sense that I had an experience or a reoccurring experience where I and another family member, we would touch each other, be all things that we're not supposed to do, you know, and I remember that from a young age, I was very, I felt very guilty. I felt very, I remember like after every time when this would happen, like we were children and I don't know how we got exposed to this, but we just went on doing it. And every time I would, I'm not going to stop this video because I've, <laughs> I've done a lot of stopping, but every time I, um, Every time this experience happened, every time we talked to each other, I remember kneeling down behind the toilet. Maybe not every time, but I remember vividly kneeling down the, behind the toilet door and asking God for forgiveness. You know, I was from background of Christianity. And, but yet, I find myself doing it again because, you know, we it was enjoyable. It was nice to do. And then... This, this this lifestyle deteriorated in the sense that I found myself watching pornography at a young age. I can't say the age now. I don't know the age, maybe 8, 9, 10, 11, but during that period of my lifetime. So I found myself watching pornography, reading erotic novels, and then this was not just normal like porn. It was both heterosexual porn and then gay porn and the family member that I was doing this with was female so after that stopped I found myself in a distorted mindset like with a distorted mindset I wasn't sure who I was I was very confused I was watching this porn and I started I went into masturbation now this masturbation I it continued like it became a normal thing watching porn doing masturbation it was almost like I couldn't even control myself but I couldn't even control my every time the urge came I just you know did to relieve my urges <laughs> to relieve my urges but yes um so this went on in my life I remember in it's specific time of my life where I wasn't even sure what I was. I wasn't sure whether I was gay, whether I was straight, and I was young. I wasn't old. I was maybe like 14, 15, 16. And well, maybe 13. I can't even remember. But mind you, this period, I outside, I looked like a very good girl. I was the head girl of my school. I, was, I got the best grades. Thank God for that, but I looked very put together, I looked very holy, looked very nice on the outside. And I even also remember like my mom would always like warn me that, oh, you know, don't have sex before marriage. You can always have like tons of sex when you get married. And yeah, I, I, had, a, I had a very tough, even to guys, I do not let any guy hug me, I do not let any guy... You know, I, I didn't have a boyfriend in school. So I looked very prim and proper. But inside my mind, <laughs> my mind was distorted. I was in a very... I didn't even know how bad I was. Because I always just thought that I was a good girl. Because of, you know, I'm not doing the bad things specifically. But I thought I was, you know, virgin, pure. But purity, my heart was so impure my mind was so impure but moving on to the remaining part i when i got into university 
Boston University. I was like, yes, we're out to explore. <laughs> so I got, I had some friends, you know, we had these conversations about guys, you know, the wrong conversations that we shouldn't be having. And I wanted to try out everything they were saying. I wanted to test it out, you know. And so I met this guy. Wonderful. <laughs> met this guy. I said, oh, because I was being like a tough girl, I didn't want to have a boyfriend. So I said, oh, we'll just have a thing. And I just wanted to just have a thing, you know, because I thought relationship was stressful. So I had a thing with this guy. And with this guy, I practiced out everything that I had seen seen, read, watched. And do you know the funny thing was that <laughs> even when I don't I'm not like I don't want to do it because I don't I just don't want the guys to feel bad. I'll be there with you know we're doing sexual stuff in in the sense of the word. And it got so like I just kept on doing it and I I don't even remember I remember I felt guilty, but I don't, I think I stopped asking God for forgiveness. But fast forward to the period where I was in class one day and this, a girl sat down next to me and she was my classmate, my friend. And I saw a wallpaper. I'm like, oh, okay. Guess what? So I saw the wallpaper, this guy. The guy I was having a thing with was her wallpaper. I was like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's beautiful. How do you know this guy? <laughs> and then she's like, oh, we're having a thing. I'm like, <laughs> so I'm plenty that I'm having things. <laughs> I didn't say it to her, but I was like, okay, what is going on? And when I found this out, I, before I found this out, I've been get, I was getting this kind of nudges in my heart. Where it was like a voice was telling me that is this who you're compromising me with, or for rather, like is this the person you're you are lowering who you are, you are you're just not you're compromising me for like and later on now I realized that it was God speaking to me that like is this who is this is this really what you want to continue with, and I. When that happened, that, I, would say, I would say that was the defining moment where my life changed. Where I was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't cry. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know, I didn't do anything. But I know that there was a shift in my mind. There was a shift in my life. And I remember going to church because, you know, I was a Christian by name. Though I wasn't a Christian because I didn't believe per se. So I remember going to church and, you know, I why I used to go to church in school majorly, except from the fact that I went to a Christian school, but the church I went to outside was because they were giving free food. And I was like, yay, free food, who doesn't like free food? So I used to go there and there I gave my life to Christ in the sense that there I realized that, you know what, I'm not going to keep compromising myself. Like, there's God that loves me. God loves me so much. And that he he's, he's inviting me to this life where he has given someone to die for all the sins. The incest I committed, the masturbation, the porn, the um, giving myself over to a guy. Like, Despite how oh, I was clean on the outside, virgin, you know, nice looking. But on the inside, I had a very, like my impurities. God was saying that, you know, like there's someone that has taken these impurities on the cross. And you can, you can actually just exchange. And I just, I just found out that, you know, God was not a God that was all about <laughs> When punishing me when I do my sins, when I commit sins, but there was an opportunity for me through Jesus Christ, and I gave my life to Jesus in church. I remember going. I think I went for like two altar calls, but the one altar call that I really remember was I was going forward and the enemy. I didn't know it was the enemy then, 
But I had a thought in my head that OBC, you won't be able to kiss a boy anymore. OBC, you won't be able to tell your friends the answer or cheat at the exams. Because to God be the glory, God gave me a brain that was smart. And you know, we would, and you know, asking, we all want to pass an exam. So asking friends, telling friends the answer. So that was one thing that I remember vividly. But I finally went forward and give my life to Jesus and my life <laughs> if I say it has changed I'm, I'm be, it's an understatement my life has transformed I can't even explain like when I decided that I was going to do this video I didn't I was like Jesus how can I explain how my life has changed I don't have the words I really don't I can't explain how my life has changed but there was one day that the pastor was preaching about masturbation and porn. And then suddenly, I was a Christian then. I, re I realized, oh, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> like, it was a miracle. Like, I'm like, okay, when last did I masturbate? When last did I even watch porn? So I was like, wow. Like, this Jesus really transforms lives. And if people ask me that, oh, how did you stop? I'm like, I don't know. It just happened. So that's a miracle. That, that That's my miracle. And from then on, my life has been wonderful. To, to be honest, sometimes I don't... I wonder why God chose me. Like now, recording this video, now speaking to people about Jesus. Fam, I'm not worthy at all. I'm not, I'm not like the best Christian. Even as I am a Christian now... I'm not the best Christian. <laughs> I still have the sexual thoughts, like, you know, plaguing my mind. But now I know that I'm free in Christ. Now I know that I, the urge to sin, the urge to do that bad thing is not there anymore. And I know it could only have been, it's only by the power of Jesus Christ that broke free, that broke me free from bondage. Bondage that though was unseen. Bondage that... If you say, if if you ask, this was like, no, she's a good girl. But there was a bondage. There was a deep bondage. And God delivered me from it. And why am I sharing this? It's because I want you to know that Jesus is real. I want you to know that, like, if you feel that, oh, like, you don't know anything about Jesus. Or you don't think he can do anything for you. Well, my life is one example of of the life that God changed, that he transformed, and Jesus can change your life too, if you just give yourself to him, if you just believe in him, if you believe that he died for you, if you believe that he took all those sins, all the guilty feelings that you have, Jesus has borne it on the cross for you, so that you can be free, so that you can be free from guilt, so that you can be be able to live a life that he has called you. One other thing that I know that God has done was that when I came in and you know, gave my life to Jesus, that was when my life had meaning. I realized that there was a purpose to my life. Like my why I'm here on earth is not just because of being dropped <laughs> on the earth. But like there's purpose in my life and it's I don't know every single thing, but as I walk with Jesus I see more and more, I see it unveiling or being revealed day after day. And if you also, like, with Jesus, there's clarity. With Jesus, there's purpose. And there's the utmost one, the joy and the hope of eternal life, the hope of after everything is said and done, there's someone that <laughs> I will be with at the end. And there's that is that love the love that you can't get from your parents from you from that boy that girl there's that love someone that you don't have to compromise yourself with someone that you can be you too and yeah i guess that this is i i'm telling you i'm inviting you to believe in jesus i'm inviting you to 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 just put your life on jesus because he is the one that can transform you. He's the one that can just lead you. 
I guess this is all. Yes, I've done it. <laughs> okay. Give your life to Jesus. Bye.